Okay, Charles, uh, we're we're good. We're good to go. Awesome, thank you, David. Yeah, my apologies for the delay. All good. Um, so before we start the meeting, I would like to read a land acknowledgement. The land on which we meet has been here from time immemorial. People have inhabited Southern Ontario for about ten thousand years, and we acknowledge the neutral people, also called Attawandaran and Nishnabe and Haudenosaunee, people who lived here when settlers arrived and who share this land with us. May we together learn to care for and respect each other, our flora and fauna, and the land we inhabit together. <clears throat> I'll remind the committee and members of the public that this meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the township's YouTube channel. This meeting is being held electronically due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Precautions and measures are in place regarding social distancing to ensure the health and safety for those in attendance at the municipal office. <laughs> Anyone who registered to participate in this meeting will be invited to speak in order of the applications being heard. I will now do a roll call of the committee for the benefit of the public watching this meeting. When I call your name, please wave at your camera and say here or present. I, Charles Zeidler, am present and chairing the meeting. <clears throat> Committee members and staff. Jim Brady. Here and present. Tim Cronin. I'm here. Linda Dixon. Here. Hans Potcamper. Present. David Grundum, our planner. planner. Present. And Jeremy Vink, the manager of planning. Present. Great. I will now provide an explanation of the procedures for this meeting. Each application will be read by David, and he will ask each applicant to make a brief presentation, not to exceed five minutes. The committee will then be given an opportunity to question the applicant. Any other person who has registered with the recording secretary and is wishing to address an application either for or against will then be given the opportunity to speak. Please make sure you have turned on your microphone and video and identify yourself clearly for the recording secretary. After everyone has had an opportunity to speak, the committee will make a decision on the application. <clears throat> Once decision on your application is complete, please mute your microphone and turn off your video. You are free to leave the meeting at this time or remain and listen to the balance of the applications. The applications, the applicants are advised that each application has a 20 day appeal period as required under the Planning Act. The last day of appeal for the applications being heard today is December 14th, 2022. <clears throat> at this time, I will ask if any members of the committee if they are declaring a pecuniary conflict of interest with any of the applications. No, I'm not. Oh, no. Okay, so that's everybody. No one has any. Um, so then, um, David, if you could read the first application, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Chair Zeidler. Uh, the first application is minor variance application A29-2022 by Janine Chapsky and Matthew Allen. Uh, this application concerns property at 58 Kennedy Road in Breslau, legal description being lot 22 on plan 892. Uh, subject property is with, within the R1 settlement residential zone. The applicant is requesting relief from section 6.10.2D, building line setback to reduce the building line setback adjacent to Elroy Road from six meters to be approximately three meters to permit construction of a proposed accessory building uh, being a, a pool uh, cabana. The property is located at the corner of Kennedy Road and Elroy Road. And I'll turn it back over to the chair uh, to allow uh, any members of the public and or the applicant uh, time to speak. So Margaret and John, if you wanted to give us a brief description of your application. Yeah, 
You just have to unmute yourself. I'm sorry, are we not part of uh, the Karen Martin? Okay, sorry. Sorry, then if you could mute your uh, microphone and your video. Oh, okay. I was just trying to figure out how to do the video. I'll so do sorry, that. is it Janine and Matthew? Are they here? Yes, we're yes, here. Yes, Matthew, yes, they're there. Hi, sorry about that. So no, that's okay. You, that's that's you, quite all right. <laughs> if you guys could give us a brief description of your application here. Sure, sure yeah. So uh, I'm Matthew, and this is my spouse, Janine. Yes. Uh, we are the owners of uh, 58 Kennedy Road in Breslau. Uh, and as it was sort of previously stated to you, uh, it is located uh, on the corner of uh, Elroy Road and Kennedy Road in Breslau. Um, our minor variance application uh, relates to the relief that we are requesting uh, due to uh, our residents being on a corner lot uh, with the six meter setback as a, as a standard in, in place presently. Uh, and we are asking that uh, for um, the the setback be uh, reduced down to uh, approximately three meters from the side yard property line, uh, allowing us for uh, the opportunity to build a, a pool cabana in our backyard, uh, along with uh, a pool. The pool won't be uh, the part that's close to the side of the the property setback, but the cabana will be. Um, but by moving by by being allowed to build the pool cabana. Um, within three meters of the side yard setback will allow greater use of our property uh, for the building of a pool in the backyard, uh, along with additional privacy from the uh, residents uh, on the uh, other side of our property, uh, as they have uh, recently built a pool or installed a pool themselves. Um, and it is, um, somewhat close to the, the property line dividing our two, our two properties. So we wanted to provide them with some uh, additional privacy uh, as well as ourselves um, by being able to maximize the use of our backyard. So. so we're happy to take any questions. Great, thank you very much. Do any members of the committee have any questions for the applicants? So I kind of have one question. Um, currently, it, um, you'll need a fence for the pool. Correct. Correct. What type of fence were you going to be putting up for that? Mm -hmm. Wood or chain link? Uh, along the back of the property, because there's a residence fairly close to um, the back of our property, we wanted to put a wood fence along the back, uh, obviously of the uh, required height uh, for to meet the requirements for a pool. Uh, and then along the side of the property, we were going to do um, like a wrought iron type fence, uh, but we were going to be soliciting the services of a landscape architect um, due to the fact that Elroy Road is right there and people could look right through it. So we want to um, have an appropriate amount of vegetation, uh, such as trees, shrubs, bushes, to uh, a look nice, but also to provide that natural privacy uh, afforded that we would like to have afforded to us by having a pool in the backyard. And also to provide um, some um, buffering of the accessory building that we want to construct, that being the cabana, um, so that it's not. Uh, something that's an eyesore to the to the neighborhood. We're very uh, concerned about this uh, being uh, something that is not only beneficial to us as the homeowners, but we want it to fit into the neighborhood. We understand it's the old original part of Breslau and uh, we've had a long uh, desire to live back here and we don't want to alter or change the landscape of the, the neighborhood um, in any significant way that would that would impact somebody else vis-a-vis uh, -vis a neighbor in a negative manner. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Do any other members of the committee have any questions? Jim? Sure you, Chair. Uh, to the applicant, uh, is a contractor building this pool, Capana, and is it to- This meeting is being it? recorded. Hmm. Oops. And is it being to spec not to run on to other property like the runoff of the roof. Obviously it doesn't want to run on your property for the pool. So does it run to the back of the lot or 
Yeah, we we haven't started the uh, contractor selection process yet. Um, I'll be fully frank and fair that uh, with the interest rates rising rapidly these days, uh, we were thinking of potentially building at the end of 2023 or maybe into the spring of 2024. Um, but we, uh, in the back corner of our property where uh, it would meet up with most closely to Elroy Road, there is a municipal drain there. Um, and we do plan on installing a French drain on our on the rear of our property along this, the the uh, in between the two properties, um, sorry, I'm looking out at our property because we're in the back here. Uh, French drain in, in between our property and our neighbor's property and along the back of our property mm -hmm. to manage any excess water that would come off of the residence, the primary residence, and also off of the, the cabana so that it would then be uh, carried over into the, um, the, the, the municipal drain that's on the back corner yeah. of our property closest to Elroy Road. I hope I'm describing that adequately. Yes, you have answered my question. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Are there any other members of the committee that have any questions for the applicants? <clears throat> Malika Lange. David, is there anybody here what, that want to speak uh, for or against this application? I'm just checking my list here. Chair Zeidler, um, the only other person we had on the list was uh, Ben McFadgen, who's the architect and agent, but I don't see him present right now. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, he got tied up and he couldn't make it. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, I suppose I can maybe elaborate on that a little bit is that we are planning on being professional in the building and construction of this. Hence, we've already solicited the services of an architect and that will be the our our methodology going forward mm -hmm. uh, is to use professionals to construct this. Uh, it's not going to be something that uh, uh, won't be built according to code, obviously. So, mm -hmm. great. So, how would the committee like to handle this application? Linda. Chairman, I'll make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion that minor variance application A29-2022 concerning the property known municipally as 58 Kennedy Road in Breslau to permit a building line setback from a public road of three meters in the settlement residential zone for a detached accessory structure, whereas a building line setback of six meters is required and that that approval is subject to the two uh, conditions set out in the recommendations, the one being the uh, vegetative screening along the property line at Elroy Road, and that the owners also install physical screening um, to uh, buffer the detached accessory structure from the streetscape facing towards Kennedy Road. Thank you, Linda. Do we have a seconder for that? I'll second. Thank you, Hans. And all those in favor? And that's everyone, so all opposed would be no one. Um, so just wanted to remind you of the appeal period, which be, ends on December 14th, 2022. And I believe you'll get something in the mail um, regarding the decision tonight. Okay, thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Anything else to add to that one, David? No? No, oh, nothing else. You got it, Charles. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so David, if you could read the next application, please. Sure. Uh, the next application on the list tonight is minor variance application A30-2022 uh, for Skyline Real Re Retail Real Estate Holdings Incorporated. Uh, the subject property is located at 315 Arthur Street South in Elmira, uh, is within the service commercial C7 zone with site-specific uh, provisions. Uh, the applicant is requesting relief from section 20B uh, point 0.5.3 point of the C7 zone to reduce the building line setback adjacent to Southfield Drive, which is located to the north, uh, from the required six meters to be approximately 3.2 meters to permit a physical addition to the existing commercial plaza. Uh, the applicant is proposing construction of approximate 740 square meter addition on the north side of the existing building. And I believe... Um, Mr. David Galbraith is in attendance tonight to speak to the application as agent for Skyline. Great, thank you. If you wanted to give us a 
brief description of the application, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, so my name is David Galbraith. I'm a manager of planning by the IDI group out of Waterloo uh, here tonight on behalf of the applicant uh, who is Skyline uh, Retail Holdings. Um, the purpose of the application, as uh, David has noted, is to uh, facilitate a, uh, a street line setback reduction uh, of 3.2 meters, whereas six is required by the bylaw. You note that the, uh, the site's an existing commercial plaza anchored by Foodland and the Dollarama pet store. Um, so the proposed building um, in this location, building F, uh, is a 740 uh, square, square meter addition. Uh, and there's a new building proposed uh, along Arthur Street as well. Um, the site does have two frontages um, with frontage on Arthur as well as Southfield Drive. Um, and the setback from Arthur Street is approximately 19 meters. Um, so yeah, in my opinion, the uh, proposed variance does meet the four tests of the Planning Act. Uh, it's uh, required to, uh, to, to assist with the operational requirements of the proposed uh, loading space and the turning radius into that space, as well as the size requirements for the unit uh, by the potential tenant. Um, you'll see from the site plan that the, uh, the, the Southfield Drive uh, wall of this building is uh, very much aligned with the uh, Tim Hortons, which is located in the northwest corner uh, of this intersection. Um, and it's the intention of the, the applicant to activate this facade with uh, um, high quality building materials as well as uh, enhanced landscaping uh, along this interface to, uh, to really minimize the, the impact of the, uh, the reduction here. Um, so I'm available for any questions that you might have. Great, thank you for that. Is there any members of the committee that have any questions for the application? <clears throat> okay, not looking like it. Um, David, sorry, was there anybody else that wanted to speak for or against this application? Uh, through the chair, Charles, I don't have anyone else on the list for this evening. Thank you, I'll probably ask every time because uh, there's a lot of windows here with names on them. So how would the committee like to handle this one? Jim. Yes. Um, I would like to make a motion that uh, minor variance application A30-2022 for Skyline Real Estate Holdings concerning the property described at uh, parts of lot three and six which take up 315 Arthur Street South, uh, be approved subject to A and B being understood as noted. Thank you, Jim. Do we have a seconder for that? Linda. Thank you, Linda. And those all in favor? That's everyone. So any opposed would be zero. Um, so just wanted to remind you of that appeal period date, which expires on December 14th, 2022, and uh, you'll get uh, confirmation of the decision in the mail. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, David, if you wanted to do the next one, please. Okay, thank you, Charles. Uh, through the chair, the next application on the list this evening is minor variance A31-2022 uh, by Karen Martin. Uh, subject property is 44 St. Charles Street East in Maryhill. Uh, zoning on the subject property is currently agricultural with site-specific provisions uh, that allow for a group home use of a housing up to 22 residents. Uh, the applicant is requesting relief from section 2.55 definition of a group home in the zoning bylaw to suspend the licensing requirement for a group home in order to permit specialized housing needs for a broader range of people, i.e. refugees and or other individuals requiring group living arrangements. No exterior changes to the property or the building are proposed. And we do have I'll just uh, note for the committee, we have a number of individuals in attendance tonight that have delegated to speak at this meeting, uh, including uh, uh, the applicant, uh, Ms. Karen Martin, as well as uh, her agent from GSP group, Mr. Steve uh, Weaver, who is also in attendance. Uh, so I'll turn it back over to the chair at this point. 
Thank you. Um, I guess being that it's Karen's application, did she want to speak first or did she want to let uh, GSP group speak about on behalf of? No, I was only going to speak for backup. I think uh, Steve Weaver can cover all the points. Great, thank you. Steve? Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thanks, Karen. Um, good afternoon, uh, members of the committee. Um, my name is Steve Weaver. I'm a planner with GSP Group, and I'm here acting for Karen Martin, the owner of 44 St. Charles Street East in Maryhill. Um, this is regarding application A31-2022. Um, I have reviewed the staff report uh, with our client, as well as the public submissions, both uh, in support and opposition regarding this application. Um, as you'll see in your agenda package, the submissions are fairly extensive, and um, I prepared a presentation uh, to help to try to help to uh, provide some clarification of the purpose of the application and address some of the comments and concerns that have been raised. Um, so I do have a slideshow to share, and it effectively summarizes some of the information in our letter that we submitted yesterday, which I understand has been circulated to, to the committee as well. So just bear with me while I share my screen. <clears throat> Can you see that okay, Mr. Chair? Yes. So the subject property is located in the Northeast part of Maryhill, and it has an area of approximately 7.8 hectares. Uh, it's on the North side of St. Charles Street East, east of Maryhill Road. Uh, you can see that the site has a fairly uh, large open space area associated with the existing building. And to the east of the site is an existing um, community park and community center. Uh, the other you know, three sides of the property are surrounded by existing residential, as well as St. Boniface Church uh, to the west. And it's just a closer up view of the air photo. You can see the um, kind of wing shaped building in the westerly part of the site. Uh, this is the existing home that has been used uh, for several years um, since 1999 for a group home to house seniors as a retirement home. Um, a picture of the home is provided on the right hand side of the slide and you can see in the background is St. Boniface Church. Um, so the property is accessed from the north side of St. Charles Street uh, via this long driveway to the building here. Property is currently zoned Agricultural A and R, Settlement Residential R1, and a group home is permitted in both of those zones. Um, there is a special exception on the property 26.1.276, which allows for up to 22 residents in the existing home. This is the crux of the application. It's related to the de zoning bylaw definition of a group home. Um, the bylaw defines a group home as a residence licensed or funded under a federal or provincial statute. Um, and obviously the site specific um, zone allows for up to 22 persons, um, whereas the definition is for three to 10 persons, exclusive of staff or um, a receiving family. Um, and the, really the purpose of a group home is um, for those who, you know, by, re by a variety of different reasons, whether it's emotional, mental, social, or a physical condition or a legal status require a group living arrangement for their well-being. So there's a range of different types of group homes that are licensed by federal or provincial statute, including a retirement home, such as the home that's been operated on the property. Um, there's uh, homes for uh, those with development disabilities under the Ontario Development, Developmental Services Act, uh, children's residences under uh, other provincial legislation, as well as child care centers, recreational camps, um, a home for special care, uh, which is really for nursing, residential or sheltered care. Um, it's something that uh, a home that's operated under the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, uh, for example, for um, ex-convicts on parole, uh, that's a type of licensed group home um, and long-term care homes under the Long-Term Care Act. So any of these types of homes are permitted under the definition of group home in the zoning bylaw because any of these types of homes are licensed by the federal or provincial government. Um, and um, what that really does is restrict the use of the property to only that, those types of homes. Um, and the, the purpose of the variant is not to um, exempt 
any of these types of homes from a licensing requirement. In fact, the township zoning bylaw can't do that. Um, the federal and provincial uh, rules regarding licensing and, and the statutes associated with that um, override municipal zoning. So if any type of home on this list were, were to be operated on the property, it would still require a license. Um, other permitted uses on the property include a residential building one unit, which effectively allows the existing building on the property to be occupied either by the owner or by any tenant or lessee authorized by the owner. And that authority is really drawn from the Planning Act, which says that zoning bylaws cannot distinguish between persons who are related and persons who are unrelated in respect of the occupancy or use of the building or structure. The purpose of the minor variance is really to allow for the housing of Ukrainian refugees. And there's a current need for that, as you'll see in the, the numerous submissions that were received. Um, in future, um, you know, if the Ukrainian refugee stream is no longer in need of housing, the minor variants would allow for housing other refugees, immigrants, or others who need group accommodations for their well-being, but of course does not, again, alleviate the requirement for licensing for those types of homes that do require licensing by the federal or provincial government. This would be for you know, people who need group accommodations, but there actually is no licensing program available through the federal or provincial government for those types of homes. Um, this would also allow a greater range of supportive housing needs to be met in the community. Uh, the government of Canada is currently providing settlement support for Ukrainians coming to Canada. Uh, through this program, and that program is administered by Immigration, Refugee, and Citizenship Canada, or IRCC. It allows eligible Ukrainian nationals to stay in the country for up to three years, um, and there are some criteria associated with that. Um, so they do have to have temporary or resident or visitor status, work and study permits. Um, it allows them to leave and return to Canada at any time during that stay, and school-aged children would be eligible to attend school. Um, the, the program indicates that everyone in Ontario has the opportunity to support the arrival of displaced Ukrainians and any newcomer to Ontario. So certainly this is not limited to group homes. Uh, we just, our client felt that group homes are uh, an appropriate location as it would allow Ukrainian refugees to live together with other refugees and, and to help support each other. Um, for those who want to host Ukrainian refugees, um, it, it requires a vulnerable sector screening of the host, um, which is basically a background check. Um, again, there's no federal or provincial licensing system or funding required to support Ukrainian refugees. And um, the minor variance application would provide relief from that requirement to allow the housing of refugees uh, in the group home without the need for the licensing. There are a number of supportive policies and, and legislation and provincial interests in the Planning Act. For example, one of the provincial interests is the adequate, adequate provision of a full range of housing, including an uh, affordable housing. And uh, the Planning Act requires official plans to um, ensure the adequate provision of affordable housing through policies. Um, the provincial policy statement instructs municipalities to provide for an appropriate range and mix of housing options, including special needs requirements, and the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe uh, instructs municipalities to provide for a diverse range and mix of housing options and including accommodating the needs of all household sizes and incomes. Um, likewise, the Township Official Plan encourages the provision, provision of assisted housing. Uh, it directs that assisted and special needs housing shall be permitted in all designations and permit residential, that permit residential uses. And uh, the minor variance will give effect to these policies by allowing the existing home to provide housing for persons such as refugees who need group living arrangements, but do not need access to more specialized housing facilities that require a federal or provincial license. Um, the Ontario Human Rights Commission also provides some advice to uh, municipalities insofar as planning approvals for housing. Um, they've highlighted that the Ontario Human Rights Code states that every person has a right to equal treatment with respect to the occupancy of accommodation, um, which includes housing. And there are a number of international treaties that Canada has ratified that again establish that right to access housing. Um, there were some concerns raised in the submissions that 
housing uh, the minor variants could lead to increased crime in the community. Um, but the Ontario Human Rights Commission has studied that and has indicated there's no evidence of a connection between the presence of group homes or supportive housing and increased crime rates. So just to summarize, um, the existing property and home are appropriate for the proposed use uh, to help support uh, Ukrainian refugees. There are 13 rooms suitable for individuals or families with independent sleeping areas and separate washrooms in the home. There's a large common kitchen and dining areas, um, ample space for parking, significant outdoor acreage on the property. There's already zoning permission for up to 22 residents in the building, and there would be no increase to that. So existing servicing systems are adequate on the property. Uh, there's no changes proposed to the exterior appearance of the building. Um, there's large setbacks um, and spacing between the home and the other homes in the area and the site is adjacent to an existing community park and community center. Um, our client intends to work with service providers to ensure that the residents have access to required resources to find employment, transportation, and goods and services. And we've just provided a concluding statement there that uh, the variance is minor in nature, desirable for the appropriate use of the land and the existing building in keeping with the general intent and purpose of the OP and zoning bylaw and is in the public interest. And uh, we would support uh, and agree with the recommendation by township planning staff. If you have any questions um, regarding our presentation or the application, I'd be happy to uh, try and answer them for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so Ms. Martin, did you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I think Steve covered that very well. Okay. so. Um, does the committee have any members for Mr. Weaver? Linda. Mr. Chairman, first off, I think I, uh, just a disclosure, I've let David know, but uh, I'll let the committee know that um, on November 7th, I was out doing a site visit and in order to, to get a sense and feel of the property, I did drive up the laneway and um, the applicant was, um, one of the applicants was outside and um, asked me to, uh, to listen to their, um, their rationale for uh, providing this type of use. And they also asked me to go inside and take a look. So I did do that, but I did um, make it very clear that I wasn't providing any opinions or um, any um, comments with respect to the application that that would all be handled. If I had any of those that would be here today. So I just want to uh, let the committee know that, um, I, that that did take place. And with that, I do have a question. Um, so um, just just maybe for clarification, because um, uh, I do understand this from from the the, um, the comments that were made to me is that so this has been operated since 1999 as a group under the the current definition. Um, so I think it might just maybe helpful. For the rationale for the while the use and the changeover is very much in need in in, in today's today's world just maybe the rationale is why the the applicants have decided to move transition from the type of group home they were offering to this type of group home maybe may be helpful Steve, if you don't mind sure through you uh, chair to the to member dixon um our client has uh, operated the retirement home for many years, and, and certainly that um, revealed some challenges, but particularly through COVID. And, um, you know, there, there, there's some struggles that have emerged from that. And, and um, she has decided for business reasons to not continue uh, operating a, a retirement home on the, uh, on the property. And uh, however, does want to support, you know, the specialized housing needs of, of, of people who need accommodations and, and um, has identified this need and, and with uh, the space she has available in the building and, and the site and location and, and zoning permission she has, this seemed like a great opportunity to uh, support those in need. Um, so it was really a, a business and, and personal decision on our client's part. Thank you. Great, thank you. Tim? Uh, to you, Mr. Chair, uh, just a question uh, again. Um, the applicant. So, are there existing residents there, or will anyone be displaced by this change of, uh, of say, occupancy of the building? Uh, are are some people going to be asked to move, or 
what's our present situation? Uh, through you, Chair, to, to Member Cronin. Um, so in discussions with my client, it is my understanding that um, uh, she is in the process of, of moving the residents out of the home or has moved them out. And so there would be no one displaced by, by the introduction of new residents, uh, such as refugees. Tim, did that answer your question? You got another yeah. one? Go ahead. That answers that one, but maybe if I could ask one through, uh, through you to the staff there, to, to uh, either Jeremy or David. Um, so if we allow this minor variance, does that mean they would have to reapply for a license to go back to a, a retirement home again if they choose to go back to the other? Does that sort of eliminate that license for them uh, entirely? Or can they do both concurrently? Uh, through the chair member Cronin, um, if the variants were approved, it wouldn't override uh, other applicable law where a licensing requirement comes to bear for other groups that are subject to licensing. Um, should the variants be approved, however, conceivably you could have a mixed environment where some residents are subject to licensing requirements while others are not as, as, a, as a possibility should the variants be approved. So um, does that help answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. <clears throat> Do any other members of the committee have any questions? Hans. This is an isolated property well away from transport, public transport, shopping, job opportunities, and what have you for the refugees that are to be housed here. How is the applicant going to deal with those problems? This site does not seem to be that suitable for somebody coming in and needing access to transportation to a variety of, of help sites that Mary Hill doesn't offer. Mr. Weaver? Yep, through you, um, Mr. Chair, to the, to the member. Um, we definitely looked into that and uh, have outlined um, some of our findings on that in our letter. Um, there, there are a number of um, resources available within the region to support these uh, types of homes. I believe there are, you know, Ukrainian refugees being housed in or proposed to be housed in St. Jacobs as well. So it is possible to make it work uh, in, in you know, smaller communities. Mm -hmm. Um, there are a number of delivery services available for food and pharmacy and, and other goods and services. Um, there's transportation and ride sharing services available with only a, a few minutes um, wait uh, to the property. We've, we've investigated that. And um, it's our intent that, uh, or our client's intent, um, as she stated to me, to connect uh, the residents with people knowledgeable of the resources available in the region and um, to connect those residents with everything they need um, um, because there are volunteers and others working to support the settlement of Ukrainian refugees in Canada and to help them navigate um, how to access all the goods and services that, that they need. So um, we do think, and, and our client uh, in discussions with other providers has um, um, investigated this to ensure that you know, the services and, and, and other needs can be met. Thank you, Mr. River. Hans, did that answer your question? To a limited extent, it does, because there's a lot of public sympathy right now for the Ukrainian refugees who are coming over. But what's being proposed is much longer term than, say, a two-year, three-year Ukrainian issue. And the public support and sympathy is not likely to be there when other groups come in here. I'm not convinced this is a good site being so remote from all the public services that uh, it, it, this is really the right, right use for the property. Okay, thank you, Hans. Do any other members of the committee have any questions? Jim? Yes, sir, Chair. Uh, will these refugees, when they come into our country of Canada, are they likely vaccinated and up to date with COVID? Uh, 
boosters, shots, vaccines, whatever, <clears throat> men, women, and children, or perhaps even pets included? Um, Mr. Weaver. Um, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, I, to the member again, I, I'm not sure. I haven't uh, investigated that or didn't see anything on the information I reviewed in researching this to, to see where that might be checked. <laughs> Um, I do know they, they go through a process with the federal government. So to travel here, um, there may be some checkpoints on that, um, on their vaccination status, or there may be a requirement to, to get vaccinated once they've arrived. Uh, but I, I don't have any information um, to confirm that for sure. Uh, we no. could certainly try and, and, and get that answer for you and, and Karen may have an answer for you. Can I, can I speak to that? Yes, Karen. Um, I'm quite familiar with working with public health around those issues, having arranged clinics at the home for the seniors. So I think that if people haven't received vaccinations, I am working with Waterloo Regional. This is sort of an answer to both the last question and this question, the transportation and this one. There are many, many volunteers through several groups that are sort of at the fingertips of the people that would initially land here and get set up with resources. So health resources are just one. We have a doctor that's retired that is happy to work with us. And those kind of resources to set up a vaccination clinic, I've done it many, many times with the seniors. That's not a hard thing to do. It would certainly be one of the things that we would need to do along with a lot of the other needs. Just in terms of the transportation issue, my thought was to fundraise. We've had lots of opportunity and lots of people offering uh, to get a van. I have jobs outlined for um, as many people as we want through uh, Danby uh, Appliances, just to name one, but there's other people. And he's willing to offer, you know, that's why we thought that for those people um, coming in uh, mm -hmm. A van that we would purchase, they could get to the jobs, kids could go to school with the local bus service, and we are screening for taking younger families so that um, I don't, I think teenagers do need to have access to different kinds of transportation, but we're looking with our, our group grassroots immigration services to screen younger people to um, help with that transportation need. There's also hundreds of volunteers that are willing to drive people places. And just for the understanding of the committee, this is more of a landing spot for these people to come, stay until their feeling is settled enough and have their job because they're on working visas and then can move off and set up their own household. So it's not someplace they're gonna come and stay for three years. They would move on, the next people would come. So I hope that answers both the transportation and the vaccination health issues. Thank you, Karen. <clears throat> Linda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just, just some comments because um, I think the committee is aware on past applications where I've spoken about um, a use and not seeing a use as being, changing a use, I guess is what, uh, is not necessarily, in my opinion, a, um, a decision that this commit committee should make. So I wanna make it clear that in my interpretation and view that I see this as the as the council of the day back in 1999 approved um, the exemption for a group home. Um, yes, there is the definition which speaks to the licensing. Um, that is in the definition and that to me looks more towards a regulation than an actual use. The use of the property is a group home. And just going through that list, thank you, Mr. Weaver, for all the different types of group home uses. I found that very helpful. If you take a look at a lot of those, a lot of those would, would probably, um, we could say the same things about those that we're saying about the particular use of, of, of this property as well. Although the use is the group home, the use isn't the occupants. I think we have to have to look at that very, very carefully and 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 realize that it's a group home. So a lot of those licensed group homes could 
could very well we could be talking about the transportation and other issues as well. But from my perspective, I see this as council has said back in 1999, here's the exemption to allow this property for a group of them up to 22 residential residents, I think is what is in the exemption. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, Linda and David. Yeah, through the chair, uh, just to uh, respond uh, to <laughs> Member Dixon's comments, I will note for committee that uh, within the current bylaw, zoning bylaw that was adopted in 1986, uh, a group home is a permitted use in the agricultural zoned portion of the property where this group home is actually indeed located as of today. Um, the site specific amendments, there's been two to my understanding over time subsequently increased the maximum number of permitted residents, which was otherwise capped at 10. Uh, subsequently, I believe it was from 10 to 16 and 16 to 22. Uh, the last amendment being passed, site-specific zoning amendment, that is being passed back in 2016. So just, just a point of clarification around Member Dixon's comments as it concerns permitted uses for the site. So Thank thanks, for that. thanks for that, David. So does anybody else from the committee have any questions for the applicant or Mr. Rudra? No? So I think David, um, are you gonna pick and choose who gets to speak for and or against this? Uh, through the chair, I'm going to go by the order that the names appear in our list. Uh, so at this point I have first on the list, Mr. David Islakar. Uh, so, David, I believe you are connected in. If you could unmute yourself and turn your video on. And uh, hello, hi, David. And hey, uh, can you hear me okay? I we we can yes. So, um, so we'll turn it over to you uh, and back to the chair that you can address the committee. Okay. Um, Thanks, David. Go ahead. So my name is David Islakar. I'm a resident of Mary Hill, and I would like to thank the com uh, committee of adjustments for allowing me to provide input on this minor variance. Um, over the last number of weeks, there's been a lot of confusion over this very emotional topic. And in some case, uh, it's led to criticisms, criticism, mostly from individuals and organi organizations that don't live in the community, nor understand the issue that's led to these objections. Uh, I believe this, is, uh, this confusion has been brought out by a very mixed message. Publicly, this change has been promoted as providing temporary help to a vulnerable group of people at a very difficult time in their lives. However, the situation, uh, the solution presented is asking the community without clarity to permanently accept what I believe to, is to be a major change. Uh, in reviewing the letter that accompanied the application, it makes very little mention of Uc re, uh, Ukrainian refugees. There's no plan nor strategy on short-term housing. Instead, most of the letter is justification on long-term assisted and special need housing. Uh, it too is extremely important, but it's not what was publicly promoted. It's hard not to come to the conclusion that this is a long-term strategy. Uh, for this reason, I believe both short-term and the ultimate long-term use of this property should be considered in your decision. Staff has provided an opinion that this should be considered as a minor variance. And I would ask the committee to consider this as not minor. In justifying their opinion, the planning staff concluded that the pro proposed use case is similar in nature because both groups, a licensed nursing home and an unregulated rooming house, benefit in terms of their well being by living in a group environment. I would suggest that each are very different. Housing alone is a very small part that contributes to the overall well-being in a regulated environment, particularly nursing home. For example, there's services provided, cooking, cleaning, bathing, supervision is provided. And because of licensing, oversight is provided. I believe all of these contribute to the well-being of an individual in a licensed environment. In contrast, the proposed occupants can cook for themselves, clean for themselves, bathe themselves, and would require very little supervision. Therefore, it should be considered that these are very different use cases and should not be considered a minor variance. Um, referring back to the letter accompanying the application, uh, it refers to a township official plan 
and how the OP encourages the provision of assistance and special needs housing. However, in that same plan, assistance and special living uh, is defined to include residents licensed or funded under federal provincial statute. I would suggest by providing relief of this licensing, by definition, it can no longer be called assistance or special need care. It would be something else. And I would then ask the question, does this even fit with inside the official plan? Uh, I would also, another point uh, in the letter that was, uh, that was brought up is that uh, assistant uh, 932, I guess, in the official plan, uh, assisted and special need housing shall be permitted in all designations that permit residential use. However, not included in the letter provided is the OP goes on to say, especially areas with access to medical facilities, employment lands, social service, human service, and other special need housing. Marion Hill has none of these. And I would ask that the potential negative impact of the lack of these services be considered. I am sympathetic to the short-term needs and I fully support Ukrainian relief, but not at the expense of the community because we emotionally wanna rush things along. I would ask that the committee consider the facts that there may be enough doubt that this is, may or may not be a minor variance, um, or if it, it may or may not even fit with inside the official plan and ask to have it go up to council and have them have a second look. This is why I propose sending up to, sending up to council where they would consider allowing for a temporary zoning amendment. If approved, both short-term needs of the owner are met and long-term vested interest of the community is considered. If it expires and the crisis still exists, an extension can be applied for. If the crisis is over, a long-term application can be applied for with a clear message to the community on what the plan will be. At that point, council and the community can provide input. Thank you. Thank you, David. Do any of the members of the committee have any questions for David? No, okay. Thank you, David. If you could uh, mute your mic for the time being and your video, please. And our David, if you could give us the next person I wanted to speak for or against. Okay, uh, through the chair, next person that we have is Kendra Holiday Bryant. So Kendra, if you could please unmute and turn your video on if possible, and uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Charles. Thank you. Hi, Kendra. You had some comments? Hi there. I do, I do. Go ahead. Um, I'd, like to take the, uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank the committee for having me here today to speak regarding the minor variance application A3122 or 2022 Karen Martin. You will notice part of the submission package that I have voiced an opposition to the removal of the licensing requirement from this property. Prior to expanding on this, I would like to take the opportunity to say how disappointed I was to see the vilification of those appointing a publication suggesting that there have been slanderous and misleading comments made. The opposition of this Meyer variance has nothing to do with the suggested short-term use of the property to house refugees. In fact, the committee will find that while those who have made submissions have raised concerns to the housing of refugees, it is out of concern and compassion for these new Canadians ability to set up for success as they integrate into living in Canada. It is felt by some in this community that we do not have the adequate social supports in Mary Hill, such as public transportation, access to social services, and simple infrastructure such as grocery. Given that they have had such a hard journey to arrive here, there would be nothing worse than to leave them feeling isolated. But with that said, you will find that many in our community, including my own family, have made both financial donations to Ukrainian relief and donations of many children's items to help families arriving to ensure that children's children as they integrate into Canada. There has been a gross misrepresentation of this opposition of the minor variance application and twisting it to suggest that those opposing are, ex are exercising nimbyism. There are further accusations of those opposing the application to not be welcoming to those that are experiencing displacement as a result of the war in Ukraine. I would argue that those who have made these accusations do not understand the argument that is being put forth, nor do they come from our community and understand the broader impact of the application as it is written. The opposition has nothing to do with housing Ukrainian refugees, but rather is it related to over overreaching application of the minor variants to remove all licensing requirement at present and in the future. With the removal of all licensing requirements in the zoning, as was applied for, 
there would be the removal of all checks and balances that are provided through these opening up the possibility in future to exposure of other vulnerable populations that require adequate support that are found in, in the licensing agreements. Had the original application only focused on the exemption to allow the housing of those displaced due to war, an understanding of the support plan and specific guiding principles, much of the stress could have been avoided. In reviewing the recommendations from staff, it would appear that there has been an alteration to the application limiting the variance to be allowed to accommodate the vulnerable population as defined. I would ask that the committee consider taking this recommendation one step further and grounding this decision in legislation. I would ask that consideration be given that the request be reviewed as outlined by the staff recommendation as an exemption under the Planning Act 1990 and in keeping with section 39, one and two, which states, one, the council of the local bylaw passed under section 34 authorized the temporary use of land, buildings or structures for any purpose set out therein that is otherwise prohibited by the bylaw. And two, a bylaw authorizes a temporary use under subsection one shall be defined, shall define the area to which it applies and specify the period of time for which the authorization shall be in effect, which shall not exceed three years from the day of the passing of the bylaw. By allowing for a temporary exemption under the Planning Act, it would satisfy the request made by the applicant for short-term use to house refugees and address the sense of urgency to allow for housing of individuals who have been displaced due to war, all while protecting the existing bylaw, which requires licensing oversight of a group home. This will allow for longer term planning that is in keeping with the official plan of the Township of Woolwich and will also require cons consultation under the Planning Act with neighboring properties should the applicant wish to explore other opportunities in the future. Alternatively, should the applicant not wish to issue, um, this issue to be reviewed under the Act, does the legal agreement be entered into with the applicant and the municipality that would allow for special use of the property for the purpose as outlined to house refugees as requested and revert back to the current use following either a set time frame, for example, a two year period, or when the need no longer exists, whichever should come first. I believe that this can be considered under the Municipal Act. I would like to thank the committee for their time today and consideration as outlined in order to help satisfy the need of the applicant, but also consider the concerns raised related to the application as outlined in the initial proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Kendra. Do any of the members of the committee have any questions for Kendra? Not looking like it. So Kendra, if you could uh, shut off your video and mute your microphone for now. And David, if you could uh, let us know who's yeah. next to speak, please. Uh, yes, uh, Chair. Uh, next on the list we have is Janice Nielsen. I don't see Janice on the list. I'm just uh, saying her name in case she is there under a different name. Okay, uh, moving on to the next, we have uh, Mike Grubb. I believe Mike is patched in. Hello. Hi, Mike. Uh, oh. Mike. Hello, I'm not going to be speaking tonight. I'm just uh, following the others who have spoken and in agreement. I have opposed and I know there's more information to come. So I will pass on speaking beyond this. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, next, we have uh, Barb Grubb. I believe Barb is here. Hi, I'm, I am Mike's wife. So he's letting me do the talking, so. Yeah, um, thank you so much for having me. I just wanna start by saying my property backs on to 44, our property backs on to 44 St. Charles Street um, East. Um, and I also would like to say that the Martins have been fantastic neighbors and we have never had conflict with them in the past. So I want it noted that this actually makes me quite uncomfortable to have to oppose um, the proposed plan. And I really do hope that we can come to some kind of compromise that works for everybody. I have been a social worker for 22 years, so helping people in need is the foundation of my life, both personally and professionally. I want it noted that I am not opposed to the plan of helping the Ukrainian people. I understand that there's a need for housing and the people of Ukraine deserve the opportunity for safety and stability. However, experience also tells me, which has been noted in our meeting already this evening, that newcomers does, uh, require a significant amount of transition support in order to properly transition into our community. This is even more so when we are placing people in an isolated community in a rural community. 
Based on the vagueness of the plan that has been shared with me, I have serious professional concerns about the the transition support plans, what they would look like for individuals. And I'm worried that details such as employment, grocery, transportation, but also plans with schools, including do the schools have the capacity to offer the ESL support necessary when it's two rural schools uh, for the students and the young children moving into the area. And because of the vagueness of the plan, I'm not clear of whether or not this has been thoroughly thought out. Nevertheless, this is not my reason for, opposite, or for opposing to the application of the minor variance change. My opposition is based on the steps of which are being taken and the concerns about the future use of the property as noted by other people. I understand provided by, or I understand from the staffing report provided to me that the committee feels that this meets the criteria for a minor variance change. However, I would like to challenge that. I have consulted with two professionals involved in municipal politics and planning, and both parties feel strongly that this change does not constitute minor variance. And what is being requested is an obvious change of the use of the property and therefore should require a zoning bylaw change. I cannot help but to feel that the request for a minor variance change is extremely short-sighted and is being done out of convenience and not necessarily out of best interest. Providing permanent relief from the, from the land use definition of group home not only changes the current use of that property, but also permanently removes the licensing um, that's attached to that property. Once this property removes the requirements, there is no longer any professional standards for competence or conduct of the services that's offered in that home by the current or any future owners of that property. This to me is not minor in nature. The staffing report also provided recommendations for a certificate of occupancy and relied heavily on this to support the ad, that the application to the criteria of minor variance. Let's be honest, this doesn't solve anything, but rather it band-aids a solution that attempts to offer a false sense of security. The responsibility, of, it is the responsibility of a proper owner to be forthright with the township in obtaining a certificate of occupancy um, should any future changes to that property occur. A certificate of occupancy simply focuses on things such as meeting codes of standard for electrical and fire. Um, and if the township monitors, and I don't know if the township monitor enforces a certificate of occupancy, but my assumption is that they do not. So therefore, this offers no protection. In addition, the staffing report has noted that there is still a requirement for on-site supervision. And again, I ask whose responsibility is that for monitoring this and providing this if the licensing is removed? Once you remove the licensing, even though it's zoned as a group home, it will no longer require to operate as with a group home standard. Therefore, there is no enforcing that recommendation. The plan of on-site supervision um, may be explained more in a justification planning report, but to my knowledge, that report wasn't shared with the township and it wasn't shared with the public to answer these questions. I want to be clear that I trust the Martins and I believe they would use the property as they describe in their plan to support refugees. However, the same may not be true who, um, whenever the property changes ownership. I have no assurance that somebody with no ties to our community won't try to operate this property as a group home with no governing body or licensing in the future. It is not, it not only poses a potential risk to the community, but this could pose a potential risk to future residents of that home. It is for that reason that I asked the committee to decline this application today and much like others today, apply for a temporary zoning bylaw amendment to be made for a specific period of time. This would allow the Martins and the community of Maryhill to support the refugees at this time of need, while at the same time provide protection to the community on its operation and future use. I wanna thank you for hearing my concerns and um, I hope our recommendations can be heard and we can come to a solution that we can all agree on. Thanks, Barb. Do any members of the committee have any questions for Barb or any comments? Okay, it's not looking like any. Thanks, Barb, if you could, yep, great. Uh, David, is there still more waiting? Uh, yes, we have Stephanie Guritz from Waterloo Region Grassroots, Grassroots Response uh, on the list, and I believe she is in attendance. And Stephanie, if you could, unmute and put your video on if possible that'd be great she was in the car or something was that the one i i believe so uh stephanie are you there i 
you think we could do some? Oh, some, oh. 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 Stephanie? No, it actually was Karen. I was going to, I was going to, uh, am I allowed to offer a comment to the last comments or no? Um, if I'm not, it's fine. Yeah, I think it's only committee members, right? Oh, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, if you can please mute as well, that'd be great. Linda. Just, just for clarification, so um, have we, David, I understand from your yourself that um, the next speaker is is speaking for. Have we dealt with all of those that are um, wanting to uh, speak against the application at this time? Uh, I'm not aware that we have entirely. Uh, although we are getting further down our list, and the some of the additional names are the ones that I understand were in support. Okay. I just, I just want to, for myself, I just kind of like to hear the, the opposition and then the, those four kind of in two separate groups rather than jumping around, but I'm, I'm not sure what the rest of the committee's desire is. David, did you want to skip stuff, Stephanie, then? And yeah, we, we can, we can circle back. Uh, I do have her connected here, but uh, she's not responding. Um, so next on the list, we had Wendy. Oh, er oh. So, sorry, David. Stephanie put her hand up there. Do we have a chat part of this at all? Okay. Sorry, let's, let, we'll move on then. Okay. Um, next on the list, we had Wendy Irving, uh, but I do not see her present. Uh, next, we had Pamela Yuri, and I do not see her here. Uh, we have Bonnie Bryant, who is present. Uh, Bonnie, did you want to speak to the application? Uh, no, I'm just here to observe. Okay, great. And next we have Margaret Similio, and I believe Margaret is present, uh, showing as Margaret and John. Yeah, they, they unmuted. Yeah. Sorry, not too techy. Hi, Margaret. <laughs> Hello. So the floor is yours if you wanted to make some comments. Yes, um, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, I'm from the city of Waterloo. As long as the committee is satisfied with the various regulations and requirements of the minor variants, I believe that Karen Martin's application should be granted. As long as Russia continues to wage a war, Ukrainians will seek safe places to live. Let's not let Mary Hill's fear and unfounded accusations prevent essential housing. Worldwide, whether poor or wealthy, individuals in entire countries have come together to help the plight of Ukrainian victims. Mary Hill's strong opposition is shocking and rather unusual. St. Jacob's, for instance, the local population, volunteers, Ukrainian community have come together. They have welcomed, renovated, donated, and fundraised over $200,000 for a group home for Ukrainian refugees with no negative repercussions to their families. Now, Mary Hill was settled by European immigrants in the 1800s, likely by some refugees themselves seeking a better life. Yet current residents deny Ukrainians the same opportunity. A petition signed by over 60 individuals, letters express residents' concerns that the homeless, poor refugees are not welcome in Mary Hill, citing removal of restrictions that does not serve the needs of their community, raising safety concerns, and for their residents and their community. Now, this is simply untrue because there's no evidence to support these of any of these claims. Ukrainian refugees are not a threat to anyone. They are actually victims of war. Letters stating Mary Hill has a strong inclusive community that includes all people. My question is how? What these uh, opposition letters are vividly describing is exclusion. 
Strong communities gather together. They are not threatened by helping strangers, those that they may de deem undesirable in <laughs> desperate situations. Letters of concerns of children playing in their park, close to their properties, their church that backs onto the former retirement residence. I find this personally deeply distressing that these letters mention religion and church. Is this not um, their church? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is Boniface not a public space? Do refugees or people with problems need not attend or seek solace and help in this church? Where are your works of faith, I'm asking you? A year ago, Ukrainian lives normal lives. Their children were in school. Parents look forward to Christmas and church, just like all of you. Are you really afraid of hardworking mothers? Grateful that their children can learn and play in safety and peace? Ukrainians have Q8 and work permits and will actively seek employment to support themselves, not wandering around aimlessly with nothing to occupy their time as some have suggested. Also concerns of running the retirement residence, staffing issues, ratios, mental issues. Ukrainian refugees are not in need of monitored senior care facility. And these concerns are actually completely irrelevant. On Sunday, I spoke with the Grand Knight of the Knight of Columbus, your Tim Vey. He expressed his desire to help in some way. I will keep in touch with him. We've changed numbers, exchanged numbers, and I hope like-minded residents join us. Now I'll speak to some of the character of these Ukrainian people. We have friends in a tiny, remote village in Ukraine with even less possessions. They now live with total strangers. They share a kitchen with no issues, all the crops and housing. And the reason why is because Russian forces killed every last living creature and poisoned their water. There is nothing left. <clears throat> so while asleep on November 10th, powerful shelling became, uh, started hitting a town. A mother grabbed her four children, the father is um, in the army, fled in the car. The car hit a landmine. 14-year-old Mihailo regained consciousness, pulled out his mom, his nine-year-old sister, his two siblings died in the, in, in the landmine. Mihailo, who has a concussion, <clears throat> goes across occupied territory, swims an inlet towards Ukrainian soldiers who grab him, grab a boat, go back, rescue the mother and sister, and are, all are now in critical condition. Today, as we speak, missiles, cruise missiles are slamming into the entire Ukraine territory, worse to date. Ukrainians are fleeing. These are some examples of the strength and the character of some Ukrainians that may choose to live in Canada. So dear committee, I'm asking you to be like Mihailo and do the correct thing, push through your fears and be courageous because what is the point of saying never again if we do nothing? Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. <clears throat> and then Mark, oh. John can't get his computer to work. Can he um, speak? Sorry. <laughs> Okay, I guess if it's going to be quick, we usually have a five minute per, right? So I understand. Uh, as it's a, uh, my name is John Samilo, I live in Waterloo. While we've done a lot of uh, work for the uh, Ukrainian refugees that have come to the our area, um, I was a teacher for thirty five years. Schools are always open; um, they're always ready to to have students leave to go to other schools and are ready for input. Um, it's business as usual. To contact the schools now is like calling Subies and telling them that you, you're going to go shopping. They're ready. I've taught all over the place. Schools are ready for an influx of students. And some of the confusion, um, perhaps you can clear up um, uh, licensing and certificates. Uh, having read the, uh, I'll go quick, having read the um, uh, development services uh, staff report, cleared up a lot of things for me, um, but so I found even some of the letters that are objected to it were very confusing. At one point, the change will be permanent, and then it says the proposed use is temporary. 
So I found the letters against um, very confusing. And while I found the report that uh, Woolwich Township put out, the Development Service Staff Report, very enlightening. And I hope that we can come to some kind of agreement that the refugees are able to use this facility. If it worked as a senior's home, as a residence, it can work as a refugee residence. And I hope that we can find some ground that satisfies everyone uh, and, and makes everybody feel um, that their concerns are satisfied. Thank you. Thank you, John. And David, is there anybody else looking to speak on this? Uh, through the chair, we have Lucia Harrison, who was on the list as well. I don't see Lucia in the in the call right now. Uh, we had Ola Lendile. I don't see Ola here. I'm just going to go through the list here, Charles, just to call Maryland. for for anyone that that we have on the list. Uh, we had. Tara Bedard, and I don't see Tara here. Uh, we had Ilgus Ladipov. I don't see Mr. Ladipov. Yeah, up to our uh, We had Christine Masters, and I don't see Christine. Couple of points. Mm -hmm. If there's, um, I'll turn it back over to the chair. I, that's the end of our list of um, names for the application. Okay, it looks like Steph is unmuted. Steph or, Stephanie, sorry, are you, can you hear us? Yes, sorry, I was just driving my children to a uh, program and I, and I couldn't figure out how to unmute myself. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, so you have so an I'm opportunity if you want to go road. ahead. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I'm, I'm Stephanie Gertz. I am one of the founders for Water of the Region Grassroots Response to the Ukrainian Crisis. Um, we started up in March in response to the war. And from that time, we've built up a network of over 350 volunteers with a majority of them wanting to assist with uh, transportation, food services, social support um, and whatnot. So we have a massive amount of volunteers and people in the community. And of those 384, we hardly did any advertising whatsoever. People are reaching out to us um, everywhere to offer support for Ukrainians coming into our area. Now, I also want to mention that we've been connected with organizations across Ontario, much more remote than Mary Hill location. Um, Mary Hill location is actually in a really great location for jobs um, and employment. Uh, they're 20 minutes from downtown Waterloo, 20 minutes from downtown Kitchener, 20 minutes from downtown Guelph. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic location. Uh, like the, one of the previous speakers spoke about, the Ukrainians coming here, they are fleeing war. They got up, they packed their knapsacks, and they traveled for days on foot. They've spent, you know, days in terminals. They're not coming here um, expecting it to be easy. You know, we get emails all the time. So mm -hmm. from our application process, we have over probably 600 applications from Ukrainian families that are seeking assistance to, to come to Waterloo Region. We can't keep up. Currently this month um, and next month, there's about 18 families um, coming into Waterloo Region um, that, that are looking for our help and assistance for finding hosts. Some people don't realize that the, the process for coming in here is through the CUAT uh, process, CUAET process. It is totally different than normal immigration refugee process. They get a one-time fee of $3,000 per adult and $1,500 per child. And that's what they get. That's it. They have absolutely no support for finding hosts. Majority of people are flying into Canada, booking flights, and they're finding hosts through WhatsApp. They're finding hosts through Facebook. They're talking to strangers. They're just connecting with anyone. And when they come into Canada, they land at an airport. If they happen to go past the Red Cross booth at the time when it's open, they might get information about settlement services, about any of this documentation and support. There is no absolute support for housing other than maybe a one week or two week stay in a hotel if the Red Cross has space and if they're open. So these are all major concerns. So when Karen reached out to us and said that she might have a facility for 13 bedroom space, we said we just 
we were so ecstatic. You can't tell me that um, we have so many volunteers that are working with so many families. There's a family with a husband and wife, a four-year-old and two one-year-old twins. He's in Italy right now, or they're in Italy right now. He's working 15-hour days, seven days a week, and she's at home, in a, and they're living in a 430-square-foot um, inn for the last eight months, and they want to come to Canada. And I'm talking to them right now, and they would be one of the families that would be coming in. We have the resources. We have the support all across Ontario and Canada, around the world. We're making it work. People are rallying together to help. We are partnered up very closely with KW Multicultural Centre, as well as the YMCA for settlement services. That helps with education, employment, healthcare, income support, immigration services. We're also connected with organizations such as 519 Community Collective, which is helping with food baskets and, and other things. Um, we have the teams, we have the power, we have the passion. Um, for people mentioning that outside groups that are coming in um, and commenting on if, well, what should do this minor variance, it's because water of the region is rallying together. It's the whole water of the region that's supporting the Ukrainians that it would go into this space, not just people from Mary Hill. Um, yeah, and I mean, yes, <laughs> I don't know what else I can tell you. I'm just in the car, like I said, I don't have my PowerPoint with me. Um, but there's there's desperately families in need right now that could use the space that are living in hotels um, or have a flight in two weeks and they've been scrambling and they're just looking for someplace safe to live. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Do any members of the committee have any comments or questions for Stephanie? I know. I, 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 I can't talk about all this. No. Uh, Stephanie, can you mute your mic for us, please? And also I, Margaret and John. Unmute. Please mute. And David, just to verify, that is everybody? Uh, based on our list and who I see here, that is everybody. But perhaps uh, just do a final call if there's anyone's uh, linked yeah, in here. Yeah. Sorry. Is there anybody here that uh, was wanted to speak for or against this application that hasn't had the opportunity? Nope. Okay. Um, so I guess, uh, members of the committee, does anybody have any more questions that they need co or comments? Hans? Perhaps I'm a little confused, but it seems to me we have two issues. One is an immediate need for housing of Ukrainian refugees and, uh, having, uh, escaped uh, war-torn Europe myself, I certainly understand that and sympathize. But I think there's concerns here that we're changing the use of this property longer term once the refugee issue is resolved. Am I correct in that uh, assumption? Perhaps uh, staff can clarify that. Uh, through the chair member, Pot Camper, could you please repeat the question so I can get it straight and I'll, I'll provide an answer? Okay. If we give, if we support this request to allow conversion of the seniors' home to house refugees, is that a permanent change or can we put a time limit on it so that it doesn't become an open ended approval for what this? building was never intended to be to be used for recognizing right now it would be helpful to the ukrainian community to have a temporary place to stay while they settle in canada and find more permanent accommodation uh through the chair member pot camper to the best of my knowledge uh we can't invoke a um a time limit or, or expiry period on a minor variance approval. Um, I'll perhaps also defer to our manager of planning, Mr. Vink, uh, uh, to have a word on that as well. Yeah, through you, Chair, to to Councillor, uh, to Member Pockhammer. Um, no, through a variance, we can't put a timeline on anything. Um, we're amending the definition to allow something. So yes there is two things kind of going on that are getting intermixed. One is to address the, the needs of the refugees as, as what they're proposing that will take place initially. 
but the changing of the variant through the variants would allow a longer term opportunity to suspend them to allow for non-licensed group home setting. So let's be very clear, what we're trying to accomplish, what this is accomplishing, the proposed variance, is saying that group homes can still exist on the property of any kind, right? They'll still be licensed if they want to come in. So she could modify the use um, in the future and go back to a group home and they would be licensed as required. So there's certain licensed group homes. But we're also saying there's an opportunity in here uh, for housing for people who need to still live in a group home setting that aren't don't fall under the licensed scenarios. So there is different housing that doesn't necessarily fall into a group home scenario that is licensed by the federal provincial government. The refugees fall into that example right now. They're not licensed by anybody. So the proposal in front of you is to suspend the licensing requirements but we're not saying it's not gonna be a group home setting. We're still saying it's a group home setting and still a supervised group home setting, just not licensed. Does that clarify that, I think, hopefully? I would say as clear as mud, but I understand. Thank you. So, while you're both on there, I have one question too. Um, in the recommend staff recommendation B, it does talk about um, that if there's any future change in the nature. So if it was to go away from being um, housing refugees, would that not be a change in the nature and then not allowing other things to happen? Here you, Mr. To, to the chair. Um, we're saying that the change in nature is kind of to explain that we don't want someone to take the use and modify it um, to a different kind of use, to, to a, not maybe uh, see maybe refugees in this case, which we're saying we're dealing with refugees at the moment. But if they were to change it up and go back to the group home setting, we'd like to go back to get a certificate to acknowledge they've gone back to a group home setting and the licensing. Um, if it was to another form of non-licensed group home, we want to verify the nature of that use is still consistent, and we also want to make sure that it's a group home setting and it is still a supervised group home. So we would want to check the nature of it is still consistent with the variance being approved. Great. Do any members of the committee, Linda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to staff. So um, I was, after reading, going through things and looking at the zoning bylaws, I stated earlier, I feel that this, you know, it's it, the, the use is permitted, group home, period. It's, mid, it's in the exceptions, it's a group home. Um, the exception is for, in this case, for the, the 22 residential uses, but it's allowed both. Thank you, David, as you clarified as a right in the agricultural zone and then the, the exemption. So definitely looking at that is, is this, as I said, uh, lifting the licensing was kind of like to, in my world and, and in my planning world as being um, a lifting of a regulation. Um, but there was a point raised um, by one of the, one of the um, individuals speaking today about the OP and I've gone back and I've looked at your comments because I read them and then I've, I've gone back and I've looked at them again with respect to the OP. And I wanna be clear in my mind, um, I think the use is a group home. It's it's a group home, and I don't have any concern with 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 lifting the licensing because it's a group home, and that's what's that's what's allowed. And I think the supports are there. Um, it's a community. It's in Waterloo Region. That the supports are there. But what is concerning me is that we are creating uh, a minor variance that does meet the intent of the official plan. And I'm just looking at that section nine point three point one. And something you said, Jeremy, about the supervisory piece of it. Is that the, the piece that we're looking at in terms of this meeting, the official plan is that the long-term, regardless of whether it's a retirement home, one of the other licensed uses, a group home for refugees, um, that section is being met with the lifting of the licensing in the official plan. I just wanna be clear in my mind that we're not contravening the OP. Yeah, through you, Chair, to uh, Member Dixon. So, yeah, I don't see us contravening the OP. It is still a group home scenario, still a group home setting. We're changing what the definition, what the word, what group home meant um, in the current bylaw. It's not in the zone official plan. It's not saying that it has to be licensed necessarily. But we're just saying on the zoning that it, 
we are still allowing a group home. It is still there. There is still a supervised, it is still operating in that sense with some level of oversight by the landowner or the prop or the manager of the property. Um, I was just trying to find the OP section you're referring to, but I just don't have it at my hand fingertips. Um, but yes, I would say we're not contravening the OP. Uh, the use is permitted, a group home setting is permitted, and group home setting is in the OP and the zoning. So nothing's being contravened here other than just changing what the definition might be of how that's put forward. Licensing isn't actually a land use question, generally speaking. The licensing component is talking about how they operate internally, that the province sets in rules about maybe certain restrictions about, like they mentioned, um, certain levels of care for like, like, so like you take seniors, there's certain levels of care or other elements, but it's not actually identifying that the land use itself, it's not talking about the land use itself, it's talking about the individual, how that home operates under a different licensing requirement, which has nothing to do with the zoning. Thank you, Jeremy. That's kind of what I was thinking, but I just wanted, and I, I note in the staff report, if it, if it's, I don't know if it's taken verbatim, but it does not say the word shall. So that's why I was asking for the clarification. If it said shall, then. Yeah, it just, yeah. just to be clear, it actually says assisted in special needs housing, including group homes. It doesn't say it has to be only a group home that's licensed. It is special needs and assisted housing. So it is giving that care. So that's still what's proposed in the variance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Uh, Tim. Just, uh, just a comment. Uh, one of the comments from the uh, public was uh, suggesting uh, take this back to council. Uh, my take is that council did uh, look at this and recognize this property as being able to hold out through time up to 22 uh, additional people. So council has already looked at it and established that this is uh, feasible as a group home or as a retirement home for additional 22 people uh, within the township at, at this site. So uh, I think council has already uh, established that it is. We're discussing uh, the licensing requirements to uh, of the people that, uh, that, are, that are there. So I see this as uh, just uh, a simple uh, occupancy uh, requirement to, uh, to allow to do so. Uh, as much as all the rest of this goes on, I think it's already been established that this site can handle uh, 22 uh, residents and uh, uh, we shouldn't be there to hold it back. Great, thank you, Tim. So does anybody in the committee have an idea of how they would uh, like to handle this or put a motion forward? Chair? I'm prepared to make a motion that uh, minor variance application A, uh, A31 2022 GSP group on behalf of Karen Martin concerning subject property is uh, 44 Charles Street East Mary Hill request and following relief from zoning bylaw uh, uh, one section 2.5 try definition to group home to suspend the license requirement for group home in order to permit specialized support and assist the housing needs for a broader range of people, e.g. refugees and or other individuals requiring living arrangements to support their well-being be approved subject to A and B that is uh, outlined in the staff report. Do we have a seconder for that? Uh, Jim, you'll second that? Thank you, Jim. Uh, all those in favor? So that's everyone. So then all those imposed would be a no one. So just another reminder, we've been here for a little bit on this one. So there is an appeal period that expires on December 14th, 2022. And I guess, is it gonna be Steve Weaver or Karen Martin that would get that um, sent to them from staff? Uh, through the chair, we would be sending it to both um, the the owner and their um, their agent, Mr. We Mr. Weaver. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, and then, David, I guess we have one more. Uh, through the chair, yes, we do. Uh, so the remaining application, it's actually uh, three applications uh, that are interrelated. Uh, so uh, following is consent application uh, B22, uh, 2022. 
and sorry, I'm just grabbing my sheet here, as well as uh, accompanying minor variances A32-2022 and A33-2022 that concern property on Elmira municipally addressed as 4 Walker Street. Um, I'll start with the consent application B22-2022, proposes to sever a parcel of land measuring approximately 260 square meters from 4 Walker Street to create a new residential lot. The proposed retained lands that would have an area of 332 square meters uh, would also constitute a residential lot containing an existing single detached dwelling. Uh, there is an existing accessory building being a detached garage on the subject property which is proposed to be removed. Uh, the accompanying minor variances are as follows. File A32-2022 which concerns the uh, which would concern the retained lot uh, containing the existing single detached dwelling is seeking relief from section 6.10.2D uh, 6 uh, to reduce the building line setback adjacent to a street from six meters to approximately 4.3 meters for the existing dwelling. Uh, that would recognize the existing setback, but on the new retained lot for the existing dwelling. Relief from section 12.1 to permit a reduced lot area of approximately 332 square meters in the R5 zone, whereas 370 square meters is required. And lastly, a relief from section 12.4 to permit a reduced side yard setback of approximately 0.9 meters to the existing dwelling, whereas 1.2 meters is required. Uh, and the last ap related application, minor variance A33-2022, uh, concerns the separate, proposed severed lot seeking relief from section 6.10.2D to reduce the building line setback uh, from approximately from the required six meters to be approximately 4.3 meters to the front wall of a future proposed uh, new single detached dwelling. Also relief from section 12.1, to permit a reduced lot area of 260 square meters in the R5 zone, whereas 370 square meters is required. Also relief from section 12.2 of the zoning bylaw to permit a reduced lot width of 10.4 meters, whereas 12 meters is required. And lastly, as part of this related variance to the severed lot, uh, relief from section 12.3a to permit a reduced lot frontage of approximately 10.4 meters, whereas 12 meters is required. So that is a summary of the two uh, re requests for minor variants, as well as the requested um, uh, residential severance at this location. And I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you. Is it Audrey and Colley? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, well, Kristen Barrowsdale be speaking on my behalf. Okay, perfect. Kristen. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Kristen Barrisdale. I'm a planner with GSP Group. Um, as Adrienne had spoke to, we are the agents representing her with respect to the proposed um, consent application. I'll keep it very brief. I've had a chance to review um, the staff report and recommendations put forth by David um, we have no concerns or objections uh, with the application, and I'm just here to answer any questions that you may have or respond to any inquiries um, that uh, have been expressed to the committee in advance of this meeting. Thank you, Kristen. Do any members of the committee have any questions for Kristen? Okay, not looking like it. Um, Jeremy, was there somebody else uh, here for it? I see it. D. Oh, and Oksana. Yep, go ahead. Uh, through the chair, we did have uh, three individuals for this application that requested to be kept advised. Um, Deanna Gallen was one of those. I don't know if that is Deanna who's on the line. And yeah, I'm here. I wasn't hoping. I was hoping not to do video. Yep. Um, yep. Go ahead. I live uh, through the oh. chair. We did have uh, three individuals for this application that requested to be kept advised. <laughs> it's a feedbacker. <laughs> Sorry, Deanna. Did you want to speak on this?
Okay. It's not looking good. And was Oxana from the last one? Did you mention that name or? Oh, uh, through the chair, I see Deanna unmuted herself. Yeah, I finally figured it out. I'm sorry. Um, I wasn't planning to do video. Do you really need to look at me? <laughs> I'm not sure really what the rules are with that. Um, I don't think so. Is it, David? Because uh, if they were on the phone? Yeah, through the chair, it's it's at the committee, at the chair's discretion. Um, but I think if we can verify that this is Deanna Gallon, I think that would be sufficient. Yes, I live up six Walker and I have my neighbor beside me. <laughs> Um, my main concern I, I have is the tree. I'm not sure how this plan um, takes into account the tree that is falling on my house um, and the parking lot or the driveway. Um, it's right beside my house. It's beside my kitchen window. It's going to be beside my front porch. So those are my main concerns is the, the driveway and the tree. Okay, did any members of the committee have any questions for Deanna? No, okay. Thank you, Deanna. If you can mute your mic, that'd be great. And then David, was, was that everybody for this one? Uh, through the chair, yes. I, I have two others on the list, but I don't see them. Neither of them are present uh, right now. Great. Thank you, David. Do M any members of the co committee have any more questions? Okay, not looking like it. How would the committee like to handle this one? Linda. So, Mr. Chairman, just before I make a motion, I just want a, a, a comment from my perspective that um, I know from uh, from the report that this is um, a mixed high density zone area and um, quite familiar with with that area. And there's there's lots of different uses, commercial houses have transitioned to apartment styles. There's an apartment um, just down the street and across the road. Um, so. I think it's it's really is that mixed use, and um, we all know about the um, the requirements for intensification, and and you know rather than continuing to go out, we infill or we go up um, to uh, be more sustainable and and um, less sprawl. So, uh, at, based on that, um, my I'm going to make a motion that minor variance. Um, application starting with minor variance application 832 2022 concerning the property known municipally as four walker street in elmira uh, for relief from section section 610 6.10.2 d to permit a building line setback of 4.3 meters from a public road where six is required from section 612.1 to permit a reduced lot area of uh, 332 square meters where 370 square meters is required and section 12.4 to permit a reduced side yard setback of nine meters um, to an existing single detached dwelling where it whereas 1.2 meters is required um, subject to consent application B2022 receiving final approval. I said that right B2022. Yeah, B2022 of 2022. Yes, a lot of 22s in there. Just to comment, that's 0.9 meters, not nine meters. Thank you, Tim. 0.9. David, you got that. What's on record anyway, I guess now is 0.9. Perfect. Do we have a, a seconder for that one? Hans, thank, thank you. And all those in favor of A3222 for Linda? That's everybody. So opposed will be none. And Linda, did you want to continue on? I, I, I can, sure. Um, thank, thank you. So that uh, a motion for a minor variance application 833-2022, same property for Walker Street in Elmira for relief from uh, section 6.10.2D to permit a building line setback of 4.3 meters from a public road, whereas six meters is required, section 12.1, um, reducing lot area from 260 square meters, whereas 370 square meters is required 
section 12.2 to reduce the lot width from 10.4 meters, whereas 12 meters is required, and section 12.3a to permit a reduced lot frontage. Sorry, the first section three is lot width and then lot frontage of 10.4 meters, whereas 12 meters is required. And again, that is subject to consent application 22 of 2022 receiving final approval. Thank you, Linda. Do we have a seconder for that one? Hans, thank you. All those in favor? That's everybody. So opposed would be none. And if you could. And that, so, and a motion that consent application 2020, that consent application 22 for 2022. Sorry, Linda, uh, can I, sorry, can I interrupt you? Uh, David had a, his hand up there. Sorry, David. Uh, yeah, through the chair, sorry to interrupt. I, and this was sent to committee ahead of the meeting. I just want to note that we received formal correspondence from the region of Waterloo regarding condition number 11 uh, earlier today. And they stated to the township in writing that they would no longer be uh, asking or requesting for the owner applicant to submit a record of site condition for the severed and retained parcels. So um, condition 11 is no longer needed based on direction from the Regional Waterloo Planning Department. I'll just note that because that is in our report currently, which went out before we got that um, confirmation today. So thank you for the reminder. Sorry about that, Linda, if you wanted to continue. No, no I appreciate that. I. I've already got it X'd out, David, but thank you for, for that as well. So that consent application be 22 of 2022, again, for uh, for Walker Street on Myra to sever a new lot in the R-5 zone, having an area of approximately 260 square meters and a frontage of approximately 10.43 meters be approved subject to all of the conditions laid out in the staff report with the exception of current condition item uh, itemized as number 11, that it has been removed from the list. And that's Great. the record of site condition. Yep, thank you, Linda. Do we have a seconder for that one? Hans, great. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? And that's everyone, so opposed would be none. And then if you could finish the last one, I believe. Is there another one? Oh, no, sorry, no, no, you're right. That's it. There's only that's one it. consent application. I thought there was two. Great, thank you. So that's everything then for tonight, David? Minutes. Uh, cor correct, Charles. That's it for uh, new applications. Uh, yep. Okay. Um, so then have the committees have, have an opportunity to review the minutes circulated for the previous meeting held on October 18th, 2022. And if so, are there any changes required for that? If not, if I can have a mover, please. Tim, thank you. Sure, I'll move the adoption of the minutes from October the 18th uh, Committee of Adjustment uh, meeting and sign variance. Awesome, thank you. Do we have a seconder for those? And Jim, seconder, and then all of those in favor? That's everybody. So all those opposed would be none. Um, and that was done okay with the sign? Oh, because it was in there, yes. So, um, okay, there's nothing further to discuss. We can uh, declare the Committee of Adjustment meeting to be adjourned. David, was there anything else for you, comments or anything? Uh, just through the chair, just so committee's aware uh, that nominations for the new term of committee should be opening up in mid-January. Uh, that was messaging we got from the clerk's department uh in the last little while but we'll keep the committee apprised of when those when the nomination period is officially open great thank you very much yeah. just, to, just to let you know i'll be away december 3rd to 13th i should be back in time for the meeting but uh, there's a slight possibility if i'm not um uh, you won't even know from me because i'll be on transit if uh, the way airlines are going so i should be there but you never know that's probably one we might be able to do without you. I think there's only one so far, right? Uh, correct. We just have one for the December meeting. And we it's still the same though. date, yeah. right? December 13th. December, yeah. December 13th, yep. Great. 
Thank you, everyone. Good night. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Here. Oh my gosh, that was a long procedure. I knew it was going to be that way. Oh well, poor old Mary. Oh, they didn't get their way. They tried. Mary? Yeah. Over the yeah. I think they got a better understanding when some of those people come through and said, This is work and this is over. And That was how it went. Some of those people that were going to pose and speak and whatnot, once they heard 